Hey guys, it's Stan here back with another video. In this one, I wanna talk about my experience and my thoughts about my brand new Canon R5C, which I am shooting on right now. I've had it for about a week now and I've had some time to play around with it and my thoughts are generally positive, actually very positive, except for one thing, which we'll touch upon later in this video. So sit back, relax, and let's get into it. All right, so to help you guys understand where I'm coming from, I've had a C200 cinema camera in the past. I've had the EOS R, EOS R5, and now the EOS R5C. So the R5C is gonna be right in line with my past experiences with both the cinema side and the mirrorless side. And sure enough, the photos is exactly like the R5, which I am replacing, and everything is exactly as you expect, except for the little bulge on the back, uh, it feels exactly the same and operates exactly the same in your hand. Where it gets a little different is the video mode. And when you flip it over to video mode, there is a few seconds delay. You can cut down that delay by disabling the sensor cleaning, but overall the delay isn't that big of a deal. I would have liked to see a quick film or quick video mode in the photos, um, but I guess you know, it is what it is, and to flip it over to video, you just have to wait a few seconds and pre-plan that, understanding that you're gonna have a few seconds of blackout time before you can actually get to that video. That said, once you're in video, uh, the interface is that of the cinema lineup. And now because it's a cinema operating system, there are both pros and cons. Pros, of course, giving you all of the options of your waveforms, your zebras, and all of the cinema centric uh, options that you would expect from the C200 or C300. It's right there at your fingertips. However, it's my belief that because the operating system is completely different and is adopted to this mirrorless camera, there's a whole lot of baggage or downsides that we're getting. And this is kind of where this video is really gonna be honing in on because photos is great. It works exactly as you expect. The video mode is, is where it's 90% great, but then the last 10% is just, what are you thinking, Cameron? Please fix. So let's get into the first glaring issue for me at least. It's as soon as you flip into video mode, you're gonna have a few settings where you're gonna choose your frame rate and you choose your sensor size and choose your codec, right? And depending on either you choosing 24, 30, or 60 FPS, the camera is gonna start basically operating in that form fact or in that, in that setting. So if you choose 60 FPS, for example, what you're gonna see is that battery symbol drop from let's say 50 or 60 minutes down to about 30 or 40 minutes. Because even if you're not recording, because the operating system is tuned into that frequency and it is are you churning away and kind of recording without recording I, I don't know how to explain it that any better but it's already operating at that frequency so the idling time is actually eating away at your battery now this wasn't an issue with the r5 uh when you let's say were in standby mode in video but standby mode not recording your battery life wasn't really impacted, or it wasn't very visible that your battery life was impacted. When you flip over to the R5C, when you are in video mode, and you can stand by for about 35 minutes and your battery's dead. It's almost the same amount of time as if you are actually recording. So again, I attribute this, uh, kind of reading in between the lines here, but I'm attributing this to just the way the cinema operating system works because on the C70, C200, C300, you have big chunky batteries. And when you flip or turn the thing on, it doesn't really matter if you're using a little bit more power and you're in that pre-record mode, everything's set up and you're recording, all you need to do is write to disk, right? So, uh, but the R5C, because you're using such small batteries here, it doesn't really work that well in this situation because you, know, you, you flip it into video mode, it's in 60 FPS, you, you go do something else, you're setting up a few things, you're framing the shot. 15 minutes later, you realize that you have a 
half drained battery or you only have let's say 20 minutes of film time left so i think canon should be able to fix this in firmware i don't think that they will i don't know if they will just because it seems like the team working on the cinema operating system may be different from the regular camera stills you know they're, they're completely separate right so Hopefully they can fix something like this. I'm not sure if they will. As you've probably already seen online, there's a lot of complaints about how the battery life is short and how the battery is affected by the frame rate, frame rate that you're in. So as I said, 60 FPS, you're gonna get around 30 to 40 minutes, depending on the exact battery that you use. If you use the LPE, LPE6 NH, this one right here, this is gonna give you a little bit better. It's got a little bit better, or bigger capacity, so you're probably around 35 minutes on F60 FPS. If you drop that down to 30 FPS, let's say 4K 30 uh, XF ABC. It, again, codec raw, it really doesn't matter. It's really the, uh, the FPS that actually makes the difference. But once you drop that, that down to 30 FPS, you're gonna be in the 50 to 60 minute range. Drop that down to 24 FPS, you get a little bit more. Now, the other important thing to mention about battery life is that when you are in video mode, and let's say you've been running 4K 30, 4K 60, whatever, and you drain that battery and the computer camera completely shuts off. So it's saying low battery and it cuts it, right? So it stops recording and turns the camera off. If you flip that over to photo mode, then what's very interesting is that you have two bars of battery left uh, for photo mode, you know? And if you flip back that back over to video, for example, then it'll operate maybe five, 10 seconds, 15 seconds at most, and then so it says again, I'm low on power. But again, if go back to photo and it works just fine. So clearly video has a higher thresh, minimum threshold than photo. So. Again, I don't know if it's because of the Cinema OS requirements are a little bit different um, than the Stills OS, but if you were to pull that battery out and stick that onto a charger, a charger that shows you percentage, you're gonna see anywhere from 50 to 60% battery left on the battery. So this is very telling for me. That's kind of why I think so many people are going through so many of these batteries is because you're really only draining about half of the battery capacity before the EOS R5C is saying, I'm done. So I don't know if that's because the operating system requires just that much more watt hours left in the battery to operate, um, it, be it the codec, the AK raw, or, or, or something about the power draw, the wattage power draw. Uh, they don't want it dipping too low. I'm completely speculating at this point, but something about the way it, the EOS operating system is coded is, is you know, you, you got that limit in there. And I don't know if it's possible that, again, Canon can update the firmware so that it can give you a little bit more out of the battery. Because if you imagine, rather than being able to drain only 40% of this battery and you could get like 80% or 90% out of the battery, then the record limit should be able to be doubled, right? So that's kind of what you see on the regular R5. Because if you recall, the R5 and the R5C have basically the same processor, same sensor, say for the, 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 the in-body stabilizer, that's not gonna you know, make that much of a difference in power consumption, but in fact, the R5C doesn't have that. So, you know, ignoring that, um, you get significantly longer record times on an R5 at 4K 30, you know, just, just regular 4K 30 than you do on the R5C at 4K 30. So, so again, it seems as if there's room for improvement. To be fair, the R5C can take a plug uh, to charge and to power the camera while you're recording. Uh, that's probably what I'm gonna have to do sometimes with my very long videos or my time lapse lapses, either get one of those battery banks or get one of those uh, power bricks. The ones with the MacBook Pros are perfectly fine. This 30, 60, 87 watt ones. They're all USB power delivery. Just plug that in into the power or USB port and as soon as you get that PD 
symbol on the screen, it works fine. And the power issue is no longer an issue. So I know I'm dwelling on this fact, but of, of, of battery life, but it really is just that one little thing that would have made this camera perfect. Unfortunately, uh, right now, it seems like you're just gonna have to get double up and triple up on these small batteries if you are gonna be shooting out in the field. So that's just some, something to keep in mind. Other than that, um, thinking ahead here, I am picking up one of those Tascam uh, audio uh, hot shoe accessory things. I can't remember what it's called. It's the model number, whatever. It's gonna be slotting in on top of the camera. Once I get that, and I think I'll get that in a several weeks because it's back ordered. Uh, I'm gonna play around with that and have my audio route through there so no more cables. I think it's gonna be a little bit cleaner of a setup. We're gonna have to see how that well that works and how much of a battery drain that is on the uh, hot shoe accessory, accessory port, pulling power from that. So keep your eyes open for that video. If you have any questions, make sure to comment down below. And if this video was helpful for you guys, make sure to hit that like button. As always, my name is Stan and I'll see you guys in the next one.